Hey, everybody. It's uh, another day of the MSP initiative. I'm just briefly filling in for George. There's no replacing George. And George will be here shortly. Got stuck, as all of you out there in MSP land understand. The day in the life in this channel is crazy. So George is running on his way back to the office now so he can jump on here with me and save the day. I am by no means the host with the most that George is. So let's talk a little bit about housekeeping because I know George would definitely dive into this. It's the first thing he always dives into. So we're going to talk a little bit about the MSP Initiatives Channel Strong Tour, which I am very lucky to be a part of. So I'm going to share my screen here and just show you that. So let's talk a little bit about the MSP Initiative. Uh, we are in the Midwest, April 18th to the 22nd. All you got to do is go to mspinitiative.com, click on channel strong, and then you'll get this page here, which has this beautiful picture. Uh, more vendors are jumping on. So those names will be popping on there very soon. Um, the dates of every day you scroll down, you'll see some faces there. You, you can skip right by my ugly face right there and jump in. And then on Monday, April 18th, we'll be doing Pittsburgh. On the 19th, we'll be doing Erie. On the 20th, we'll be doing Cleveland, Ohio with our very own Bob Coppage. So I'm sure you won't want to miss us out in Cleveland when we see Bob Coppage at his place. He'll be hosting us. Then we have Columbus, Ohio on the 21st and closing it out on 22nd in Cincinnati, Ohio. Going to be a great week. Love to see you all out there. Remember, this is about you. This is not about any one of these vendors or even MSP Initiative. MSP Initiative puts these on for community play. So make sure that you get on this page, scroll down. You can click on the ones you want to register for, fill in your information, and we'll get you there. And then if you want to know other cities, if you're not from these areas or can't get to these areas, the rest of the cities are posted down below. And if you want to get a look at what's happened at previous shows, Sade does a great job of making sure we're all in place. Go down to previous stops, click on the link, view on the gallery, and you can check out some of the photos from earlier stops when we did this all through COVID. So some really cool stuff here. Make sure you guys are checking that out. Wouldn't want you to miss out on coming out and seeing us. And again, there's no sales pitch. It's just come out, have a drink, have some food and have some great collaboration. Uh, there's definitely some education that climbs in here uh, quite a bit. Um, the conversations can go anywhere, right? Just like these calls. Sometimes we talk about food. Sometimes we talk about security. It's all really, really good stuff. And it's focused on talking to you as the MSP, as opposed to talking at you, which is what you get when you go to some of the events out there in the industry now. So really cool, really proud to be a sponsor of this as PAX8 and being able to take on what we believe is how the community should be spoken to and not at and bring that right to you. So we want to get out there, register for these. You're going to be seeing a lot more as we move on. We're going to be adding things to these events to try to make them much better, but they're really great now. You want to come out and check us out. Let me stop this share, come back on here. Oh, we got a uh, chat message here. There we go. Pete Bossom. Pete, you want to climb up on here and say hello? It's just, uh, I'm riding solo until Mr. George comes in. See if we have to approve Pete. All right, add Pete in, Sade. We're going to let Pete pop in here as well. That's the fact, Jack. He gives his quote from Stripes as an ex-military man himself. Hey there, Mr. Pete. Oh, unmute yourself. You're automatically muted when you enter in. I don't know. It's a new Zoom thing. I was, I was going to join you and do a Muppet laugh. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yeah, but they're not all going to get they're not all going to get that one. You know, I mean. We, yeah, could, that's we, true. We, we could also, you know, talk about the reference and then uh, and then give them the reference and, and kind of go from there. Right. We could. It's uh, it, 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 it's. <laughs> <laughs> what will uh, they say next? <laughs> right. Hold on. I was just. Uh, yeah, it's Statler and Waldorf. There you go. Old school. That's that's uh, trying to get the actual image on there. Well, it's not as big as I wanted it to be, but let's see. Nope, that's horrible. <laughs> I, I just figured we could maybe uh, do a little little zoom in, but here we go. I'll I'll show a quick photo. 
Okay, so Pete and I have been referred to as these two guys, right? So that's why we're doing the laugh. We're, we're on shows together. We give each other a lot of crap. We have a lot of fun with it. And we starting to sound like these two guys because we also pick on our team as well just to have a little bit of fun. So there you go, Pete. Now you can do the laugh. Whoa! whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yep, so there we go. We just opened ourselves up to a whole can of worms. of problems, All kinds right? of ridicule. All right. kinds of ridicule. <laughs> Uh, That's so okay. I started off. I started off with the uh, with the bus tour. You know, pushing that thing out there. We're going to be going through the Rust Belt, which is uh, a lot of fun. We've done this twice before. A uh, lot of great partners up in that area. I really do believe it's an underserved area when it comes to options for shows. So a lot of times the MSPs in Ohio and in Pennsylvania and, and everywhere around there have to travel pretty far to get to something like this. So that's why. Mm -hmm. I think this is super great. And by the way, so is Northeast. Northeast is very underserved. You wouldn't think so, but Northeast is pretty underserved when it comes to shows too. So stay tuned for a couple of stops rolling through the Northeast as well. But if you don't want to jump on a plane and go to an event and miss out on some of the best parts of the event, which is just the conversation with other MSPs, vendors, and just people in the industry, this is the, this is the place to come out and hang out and see that. Um, let's see. Oh, we got our friend Darren on here today. Darren's been out to a few of these. I think we had Brent out, saw Brent out there at one as well. So, um, good to see you guys on here and, and following along. We love, uh, love being able to see people face to face and be able to do cool things. Um, and, and just a Pete's car doesn't hurt, you know, having the race car out there as many stops as we possibly can has been great. And, and it's, and it's, it is going to be on this tour. So Chris will be pulling it, even though I won't be there, Chris will be pulling it along. So nice, nice. So a little extra insurance on this trip uh, <laughs> for Pete. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's, yeah. gonna, uh, that's always going to come into play when you're not, you know, you're not the one towing your, your, your prize possession. Yeah. That's okay. I trust Chris. Yeah, Sade, I'm sure Chris is excited about that. <laughs> excited and scared all at the same time. Uh, uh, no. Go ahead. So, now he's he's ready for it. He he's looking forward to getting out, you know, on our side, you know. This this is like the first event in the history of our company that somebody other than me is going to be representing by themselves. So Darren, that, that individual is no longer around to do such a thing. We're not going to mention the name, but Pete, you should look at the chat real quick for Darren's smart, smart little remark. <laughs> Darren, come on. <laughs> See, I could come back and I could just say it could have been could have been that person driving to Chick-fil-A. No, just the chick. Anyways, um, <clears throat> <laughs> Ah, I'm here all week. Try the veal. Oh, this is why George doesn't let us run the show. We just go crazy. This is true. So, this is true. So, Pete, let's let's talk a little bit about you know your world this week. You know, how has has anything changed? Is there anything new from a standpoint of especially since we have MSPs mostly watching this, this or the broadcast? You know, from a standpoint of marketing, you know, what's some What's some things that have maybe changed or some things that they should be definitely looking at when they're talking about marketing from an MSP perspective? Well, I think it's all, you know, it, it continues to revolve around being digital, right? Yeah. And the more, uh, you know, what's your, a lot of people get into it and they don't set a strategy as to what they should be doing. And they think, you know, well, uh, I had one person comment to me, like, I don't think my email is working. Right. And I'm like, yeah, probably not. And they say, why? I said, well, it's only one piece, right? It's an omni-channel type thing. You've got to do email. You've got to do events. You've got to do relationship Calls. build. And I, I always say, you know, people don't get up in the morning and say, I think I'm going to go pick a new MSP today. <laughs> you know, they might say that, like, I'm going to go to the store and get a, a sandwich or something like that, an easy decision, but there's some key element. And so that digital footprint of just making sure that you're constantly being seen, being heard uh, and, and putting your brand and building your brand equity is when they do say, get up and say that phrase that morning, you're the one they think of, right? Whether it's That's a that newsletter or an storm, email. Right? Yeah. 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 It's, it, you gotta have it. You gotta have it. So but I tell uh, you the one, in, the one interesting thing that's not marketing related and, yes. and we're starting to hear um, 
which is a little odd from my perspective, is we're starting to hear a resurgence of pricing pressures. Hmm. And we're starting to hear more people are saying we're not getting the deal because we're 30 percent higher. So my, my pack is letting everybody know that they're here. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> That's my uh, my dog bell. That's how they feel about doorbell. pricing. The, do the dogs are, uh, are letting you know about pricing. Let, right now. Yeah, who let the dogs out, right? Yeah. <laughs> but 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 what what's interesting is is we're hearing, and we haven't heard this in about a year and a half to two years, right? Because, and now uh, I guess maybe inflation and some other things that are happening in the world might be driving some of that conservative, you know, decision. So. So just so you know, Darren clarified he was talking about Keith Nelson. Ah. <laughs> uh, He's not on the call right now, Darren, but he'll probably pay attention to, to this as well. well <clears throat> it's interesting that you talk about that because everything that I've been seeing, it, it, matter of fact, a big chunk of what we talk about when we're talking about education pieces is the fact that, you know, what, a, what an amazing time it is to be in the MSP space, right? For a number of reasons. And this digital, the world of digital everything, everything, digital mm -hmm. everything is like, so spread out and crazy and then you think you take that to the next level and you go to how difficult that is right it's affecting the msps especially the smaller msps because it's a difficult turn to make when everything's going digital and pushing in that direction but i agree with you i think you have to find a way to get into all the digital stuff. And then of course, adding into that, the phone calls, the, the, the manual stuff that goes along with it, that perfect storm of hitting the, the old school stuff that everybody says, ah, that doesn't work. Well, it's all a piece of it. It may, yeah, it right. may not work by itself, but it's a piece of the total solution. Right. And they're all about, you guys are all about building total solutions for your customer and, and delivering. It's the same thing with, with marketing. You got to do a total solution. You can't do just one piece and expect it to, to yield big results for you. Well, it's funny that you, you might say get that. some results. Yeah. You know? It's funny that you say that because we, I always talk about that, those turning points for me as a business, when I was an MSP and, you know, obviously I got kicked in the pants by someone smarter than me. And I, I finally listened and, you know, I got into things like traction, but one mm -hmm. of the parts of that story was we were doing exactly what you're talking about, just in a different way, obviously, because it was years ago, but we were doing, uh, we were doing the full marketing package and throwing it all out there. But what we also did was we labeled the vehicles. And so this one guy literally told me the story of how all I was seeing was these educational notes from Ken Patterson almost daily. And I was throwing them in the trash and I was deleting. And he said one day his, his IT folks were giving him such a fit. And he walked out to his window. He was in downtown Boston and he looked down and saw one of my cars go by with the logo on the roof and just said, I'm going to call these guys. Right. Hashtag, it's that perfect hashtag, storm. Hashtag NCE. There you go. Hashtag oh, NCE. you knew it. You knew wow, it was going to come this up. This guy, this guy is he unbelievable. Had to, he had to add that in on you. He hashtag NCE. Right. Yeah. That had a lot to do with what we were talking about. I mean, I crashed just the party. It, it, it felt Shade, it felt, Shade just it felt mute right. him. We're going to go on with this conversation. It felt right. It felt right. It was wrong. It's like Beetlejuice. I say NCE and out comes Ken. Yeah, right. Um, yeah. No, we're just talking about how the world has gone completely digital. Everything is digital and you need to, you need to conform to that. But just in forms of, in terms of marketing from Pete's perspective, what he's seeing that's happening now and what MSPs need to do to make that shift to get it all out there. Like he said, not one thing works. It's that perfect storm of the calls, the emails, putting out the educational pieces, just staying out there. And like my story was, a, was proof of that. It was all these things. The guy was like, I kind of got tired of seeing your name and your face everywhere. But then when I needed it, I saw the car drive by and that just pushed me over the edge. I made the phone call and he switched everything over to us. Although I, I got to tell you, I heard of a new marketing ploy from George. <laughs> I heard that he's got so many points and Darren's probably going to want to get in on this now for his business. He had so many points at Chick-fil-A that he was able to trade them and they're going to put his logo at the bottom of the, of the banner. So Bevoy could be prominently posted at, at Chick-fil-A. You missed out on an opportunity here, Darren. Yeah. He can't even chime in. So he, yeah, I gotta I gotta unmute him if he wants to if you want to let him chime in. <laughs> no, he's been he's been chatting. No, it's okay. There you go, Darren. Go ahead. There he go is. Here, there he is. 
I'm not. I'm not giving up my points for anything. For for what? For for marketing? Are you crazy? You're crazy, Pete. You're absolutely nuts. Out of your mind. What a great idea, though. Think about it. Yeah. Get so many points, and they they let you jump on their moniker with them for a period of time. No, remember remember what I got. What I sent you guys last night with the um, the dude's unique way of in a low speed maneuver opening his door so that somebody doesn't merge into his lane. You could put some marketing right there on the door when you open it. What do you think? Yeah, I think that would be really problematic when my car drives right into that door and tears your stickers right off of it. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, with, I think with you your do. hand with your hand. I know that was your, your arm. Uh, first of all. I love how George puts this stuff out there. But if it was the reverse and someone opened their door and you know for damn sure George is going to park his car inside that door open doorway, I, I would I would think that was brilliant and use it myself. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think it's so brilliant when the guy pulls up next to you and uh, maybe has more than words for you. Just I've seen saying. I've seen a car door taken off twice, and it happened to be the two times it was a police car that door got taken off. He left the door open and it got taken off. You do know that in most states that that the door, the person who has the door open is at fault every time. In most states, Massachusetts being one of them, if someone has their door, like I thought about it a few times, someone swings their door open, leaves. I thought it's going to be them. I could drive up, smash that door off. And it will be at their fault. Yeah, see, Walter says Chicago does as well. If you leave that car door open, you're at fault no matter what happens. If I that's ain't right for it. That's why it's got to be a low speed maneuver, man. That's not a, that's not a high yeah, speed. Yeah, but see, the problem with the low speed, speed maneuver is I could stop my car, get out, walk up to you with that door open and just yank you out of it and then go, go drive off. I, I mean, maybe up in Boston, that's what happens. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. In the, in, the, in, the, in the fair state of Philly, everybody's just, uh, city of Philly, everybody's well, so I was going right? to say. Right? Brotherly love, right? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't do that in Chicago, Walter says. Too many carjackings, right? You're just I opening believe. the door. Keep your windows up. Yeah. Well, unless you're armed as well, but let's not escalate. Yeah. You don't want to do that in South Carolina. That won't that won't be end well. The, the mean the mean fields of South Carolina. Yeah. Sure. Let's just yeah. on star. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> did we remind everybody about the tour? Yep, I started off the housekeeping with the tour, but I didn't. You know, I may not have done all of your housekeeping as far as MSP initiative or. That's okay. You know, all the things that you do, but we did talk just, about just, the tour. Just know we're coming to Western Pennsylvania and Ohio. Ohio. What's Great high day. in the middle and round on both sides? Ohio. Never heard oh. it that way. Yuck, 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 yuck. That's a Bugs Bunny joke. Sorry. Yeah. I was going to say. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. oh, and me and me and Pete explained the origin of the uh, the Muppets, the old the old guys. I mean, like people forget about the Muppets. Let's let's be let's be true. Honestly, one of the best We're, shows, not just for kids back in the day, because they had a lot of like funny content on those shows. They really did. It was a good show. I'd it was for it. every age. You ever notice that? Like the good the good cartoons had something that was different that could be picked up at all different ages. Well, yeah, but, I mean, there's, that, a lot, now, there's a lot of stuff. But now they have the oh, this content may not be good for you. Right? Yeah. 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 Well, Tom and Jerry, I mean, let's face it, that, that stuff was great, but man, <laughs> it was it was super violent. Like I go back and watch, I'm like, oh, now I know I love this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's a trivia question for you. What happens when the vendor becomes your competitor? Say what? Google Cloud is turbocharging its MSSP push. So what does that mean by your vendor becomes your competitor? I mean, I would think that MSPs are selling MSSP style services now. Uh, not with some of them, not without the help of the MSSP. I mean, I got it. We I have, we it. have, we have, you know, we both have contact with folks who are really considered that MSSP more of a master MSP than the but, MSSP. But Google, but, Google's selling to the street guys. Let's be fair. Oh yeah, of course they are. They always have. They'll be the last one to start, but but this play means that they're starting to acknowledge this this you know our area, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, I know I know folks. Uh, you know, uh, God, what was uh, 
if I can think of the name, but we have a we have a uh, MSP on the East Coast that I I see him all the time, and I for whatever reason I'm drawing a blank on the company, but he's been doing Google support for years, and it's been a big part of his business, and still does that, but now has expanded into other cloud ventures. But um, you know their main thing was doing those types of services, the Google support, which I never understood because, you know, there's a fine line between how they do it and what they do. They don't do a whole lot of supporting of people directly. So it worked for him. Um, yeah, Walter points out managed security services provider. Yep, we get that. I said style. Oh, Keith, yeah, by the way, by the way, Keith missed it and you missed it, George. Darren pointed out that we probably don't want Keith driving uh, Pete's trailer, and we we were just determining which Keith, but it was about Keith Nelson. So there you go, Keith. You already been turned down for driving the trailer. <laughs> I thought I thought only a handful of people are even equipped to drive said trailer. Yeah, right. And let's face it, from an MSSP standpoint, George, we've all agreed that MSPs shouldn't, unless they fully grasp what was required to be an MSSP, you should just be security first, not try to drive to the cost of being what an MSSP is. Okay, that's true. No but argument Keith there. Is, but Keith is, yeah, but Keith is right. It's another made up title, no set qualifications, other than you may have your own knock and you may have your own sock and you may have all this other stuff to, to back up the data that you need to be in that in that realm. <laughs> I don't blame, I, so Darren, Keith doesn't blame you. He says his car is in the shop for 12 weeks to replace the wiring. Yeah, we've seen the Mercedes rants. <laughs> Uh-oh. Let's not to get too crazy. How about this article from... Uh, Wait, George Reed. said not to get too crazy? Whoa. Yeah. How about this article from Reed Warren? He's like, if you're stuck at sub 10% growth, might be time to sell your business. What do you think? Uh, depends on what your business... I, 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 I mean, I get what these people are doing when they write these articles. and But again, everything can't be lumped into this. What is... what? 10% could be a number of different things. You know, I don't know. I always get stuck on trying to tag a whole entire industry based on some number. I mean, sub 10% growth, it depends. How big is the company getting 10% growth? What does that 10% look like? Sure. And forget about the 10% growth. What's their EBITDA look like? I mean, you know, it was interesting. I was having a conversation with a, uh, a peer group guy, I'll say. And uh, he's like, there's a lot of MSPs out there that, you know, get to about the two, two and a half million dollar range. They're putting three to 500 grand a year in their pocket and, but they're not really growing. Right. Yeah. You know? But they're stable. Right. Cause it takes a yeah. lot more people and maturity to jump from 2.5 to let's say five, a uh, completely different operational, you know, conversation. Right. Well, those are the, and that's part of that jumping point anyway. Right. It's a million, three million, five million, seven million. Right. Those are those plateaus. Yeah. But again, yeah, three to five, three to right. five hundred. Lifestyle you're clear business. In, you're clearing three to five hundred. That's not a bad deal, right? The only concern to the story's point and to most people's point is you're counting on the same stuff coming in every year. If something breaks or something goes sideways, you have no. If you, you don't have a backup for that because you're doing the same thing all. You know what I mean? That's where they're. That's where it's all coming from. Well, but there's all, there, the other part of that conversation was is that. You know, like once you once you get past a certain size, you need certain people that are very that are taking a lot of money to bring in, right? The service desk manager and George, the, the good George, one a lot of money. George, George, this is this is exactly you're kind of describing not with the same specific numbers, but exactly kind of the size that I you know, or the, the struggle of wanting to make that leap and wanting to focus on growth and you know, sales and marketing when you have to then hire two or three more people to, you know, just to be able to do it and, and then sustain that. And, you know, I, I mean, I'm not the only person, although I'm definitely in the minority that has kind of said, you know, that's not the ride that I want to take because of the reasons you just mentioned. So yeah, yeah I mean, and you're like, not, the, I wouldn't say you're the minority either, Darren. We run into it a lot. There's a chunk, there's well, all there's big chunks of all of these things we talk about. Right. And this is definitely, you're not a minority here. I, yeah, I, I, here, here, here's the problem, right? You're at, let's say you're at 2 million. Things are good. You're profitable. You grow granularly. And if you want to really add a whole nother level to your business, you need to bring in probably somebody who 
other than yourself is going to help run the day to day. And that person isn't cheap, right? Let's say they're a six figure person, right? I, I tell this to people all the time. Yep. I, I have this exact same conversation. Like, well, why don't you, you know, why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? I mean, because I don't, I'm good in terms of not having to have that person and pay for that person and worry about that person. And then, you know, another technician or two, which would, would be in theory, if you're going to make it work, that's what you need too. So it's, you know, it's just one of those things. Yeah. I mean, like, let's, you know, when you bring in like, an experienced sales leader doesn't come cheap. An experienced service leader doesn't come cheap. Right. You need, but like chicken under the egg, cart before the horse. All right. So you bring these people up, so the staff up for another kind of, you know, jump. Um, but what if the business doesn't actually come in fast enough? Now you got these people sitting there. That, well, I, I, you're bringing up a valid point, George. It's all about what you want and then you plan for it and you set it up, right? If Darren is in a position where, he's comfortable. He likes where he's at. He doesn't have an issue with it. Then you stay there. If you're, uh, listen, I'll use you as an example, George, if you're a guy like you, who's always motivated, all, you know, to go further and wants to take the next step and always wants to go to the next level of things, you're going to take some chances on that stuff and you're going to, but you're going to plan for it. You're going to understand that. <laughs> Yeah, these are some risks. No risk, no reward type of thing, right? But hold, but hold on. That sounds great until the world turns around and not to keep on pointing on the uh <laughs> George is gonna take the next level. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to okay. wait time out. No, no time no, out. No, wait, time no, out. No, I'm no, no, seriously. No, no, George, no. George, I only one wear star. Eagles. Think about it. You wouldn't be wearing one star. Yeah, one star. Those guys are down below. I'd be wearing four stars, Keith. Sorry, I got How four about stars. five? How about five stars? We have five. We have five. Give us respect. <laughs> you have five stars, you have one. That's your rating. One star. That that be high for me. <laughs> uh, so what I was going to say was, it, it sounds all fine and well until you know the Microsofts of the world. Not not targeting you, Ken. Just talking out big picture. I don't own Microsoft, George. If I so, did, I think we'd have some better times coming. Yeah, the forward. Mic the Microsofts of the world come back and change your program too. If you're not gener if you're not growing, you basically don't qualify to be in their program. How does that How does that keep you where you're at? How does that help the Darrens of the world? Yeah, but isn't that the job of leadership is to, you know, how much are you working in your business versus on it, right? You have to be ready for partners to make that shift or that pivot at any time yeah, because I, I, they're going to do it. They've been doing it for, gosh, as long as I've been in this business. But if your and, business is highly you know, profitable, Pete, if your business is profitable, Pete, and you're making, you know, better than the average household income, in, you know, you know, you know, at a regular nine to five job. You know, if I'm making three, if I'm clearing three to 500K, what, why do, why, why? What's what's the benefit to me cutting that in half, hiring very expensive people I need to move my business forward if I don't have some sort of outside push to generate new revenue? Well, then you don't. I mean, you're, you're basically specifying different groups. Like I said, Darren is a perfect example of he's right where he wants to be. He doesn't want to make those jobs. And that's OK. Like, I don't that's why I don't get the whole. Well, if you're only at 10 percent, well, who are you talking about? What's the group? What's the you can't even group them together because. I consider Darren to be very successful. I consider Keith to be very successful. You know what I mean? I still, and, every, and we're all very different from a standpoint of the businesses and the models and which direction we would go. Personally, I would want to take it to the next level and keep growing it because there's other things I'd like to do. I'd like to make my people have the opportunity to succeed. I'd like to get them to the next level. Everybody has a what, different what, what, feeling I, about I, I've run into, sev I'm going to say several people now where they brought their business to two to $3 million. They took four or five other people in their realm, like let's call it a peer group or an accountability group. They rubber banded. They sold that entire like, you know, set of businesses and they started a new one and then they did it again and they started a new one and they did it again. It's almost like, you know, the conveyor belt, right? You're like they know how to get it to this number without a lot of huss or fuss. They group them, they get a better number they move it and they start over again every three to five years. Yeah, but it's also very easy to get to two, two and a half million dollars in run rate. I mean, it, you know, how profitable you are obviously determines on how you run that and the type of clients you have, right? And, and how you run your business. But getting, you know, if you're a good relationship builder, you can get to that two to two and a half million mark without much investment. It's after that, or, or getting people. over that two and a half million 
then you really but have what, to start what, to, what, to make but, some major changes. If you can get to two and a half million dollars with three people and not yeah. a lot of outside money and you keep on yeah. getting it to two and a half, bundle it, sell it, get it to another two and a half, bundle it, sell it, get it. Like it just, there's a lot, like you said, so it's a lot easier to get to the two and a half than to get to five. You almost right. have to work three times as hard to get to the five. So why well, do that? Of you course. And I wouldn't, and, and I wouldn't, let's not downplay it, it, getting the two and a half is not so easy either. The millions. It's not easy, but it, it's so let's not, with the investment. Let's not belittle that as well. Cause there's a lot of people. It's, trying it's to easy, get over that million dollar if, you, to. if you have Pete doing your, your website, I think it's very oh, easy. Oh, nice, nice, nice plug. Nice plug. Thanks, plug. Darren. No, but I mean, honestly, I think, I think it's, it's, you know, from a, a respect of what's required of a, from a staffing perspective. Let's say what's required from a staffing perspective at five million versus two and a half million. It's a different investment in people, uh, even even at the executive level, right? You have to have different people to uh, lead and do things that some of your junior people won't be able to do in the ranks, right? So at some point, the owner can only do so much. Owner led everything get you to a point. And that, that point is right at that two to two and a half million mark. At some point you start adding a finance person or a, a sales team or a team lead or something that can be offloaded from that owner, right? In order to get to that next level. So it's not easy getting to the two and a half, but it's a different, different mindset to go to the next level of what you have to resource. And you know, quite honestly, you have to also realize that you're at your limitation. And that's hard because a lot of MSPs bump around at that two and a half million saying, I, I can't get past two and a half million. It's because they still haven't recognized that they've hit their limitation as far as of management or time or time splice to get to that next level. And they're, they're afraid to make that next step because there's an investment that may be a, a, a wrinkle in their profitability or some other part of uncertainty. I, that, I think I think you only in for most people the choice to make that next step is if you're on the you know you're on the clear path to build it and sell it and then do something else you know because that's you know that's what you then ha kind of have to do. But you know Keith mentioned the term kind of lifestyle business. I've kind of heard that term before, and you know if you've done something. Well, I look at it as if I've been saying my whole life and spent the last 25 years. I mean, I incorporated the same year that Keith did, ironically, even though I had done it for years before. And it's kind of like I wouldn't really want to do anything else. And I'm not. And then because of that, I'm, you know, I, I'm not hell bent on that trajectory of build it and sell it as, you know, a lot of people, you know, in my peer group, for example, that I'm in, um, you know, their goal is very clear you know, let me build this to the highest number I can, and I'm going to get out and do something else, you know, or do it again. Uh, but that's, that's just not everybody's goal. Yeah. And Darren, there's a mix there. There's a mix there too, though, because you're still uh, first, personally, I believe that every business owner should be building it like they're going to sell it because that's still going to build a solid business. It's going to get you where you want to be from an EBITDA standpoint. So I, I find a little bit of mixture in that. Like it's not all set in stone that just because you want a lifestyle business or just because you're not building towards that that same goal because the best companies, the ones that do the best are the ones that are building like they're going to sell even if they don't want to sell. I think when you're, first of all, I think when you reach that, I, I kind of disagree with you guys. I understand scaling, but in sales, it's like growth equals growth because if you're sailing on a consultative, consultative referral basis, your, your baseline's growing. So the number of referrals you're getting. We have a little bit different model is, is um, our retirement value is in our intellectual property. Well, if I want an, an intellectual property has way more value than just the regular off, you know, standard service-based business. There's, that's been proven. That's, there's no, there's no, there's no secret to that. You know, the, the harder part is how to, you know, what is your IP and, and then valuing what the IP is, right? Well, we, um, we just had the, you know, I think that long uh, after uh, I elect, gone. Electric, electric Keith is a great example. They're on series D. Their series D uh, put, took them to a billion dollar valuation. Um, they're effectively being valued as a SaaS company, although they're really at their core an MSP uh, with their own development team to help try and automate IT services 
uh, and self-service as much as they can, IT services. Uh, it's very, it's it's very odd, right? Based on all of the, you know, like it's pretty at this point. There's been enough transactions in the MSP sphere uh, to have a pretty good idea of how to value businesses, right? And you know, Reed Warren started a whole business around it, IT valuations. Um, you know, we'll have him on here again soon. But um, but uh, Electric is a great example of a, of an MSP who is leveraging IP that nobody else seems to be able to, you know, to, yeah. to, to although, to although I would use the term MSP loose on electric because they were more of a software company who was trying to be an MSP. It seemed like when we were looking but the, at but them, the software this, company is facilitating the MSP though. That's the only reason they built it. Well, and they're buying MSPs to get more leverage as an MSP, right? I mean, that's why you get someone like Techvara under the hood. Cause they're a solid, solid, you know, very uh, mature MSP. So that adds value to what Electric's doing. You're right. But I think that's why they're doing it there. They had more, way more knowledge of the software stuff that they were doing internally. And you, we had had this conversation almost two years ago, talking about this great company that we're, we're looking at. We're like, whoa, but are they really an MSP? Look at all this software. Look at all the stuff that they're doing. That's really cool. And well, now that they're buying up me, MSPs, it, it doesn't well, let make me pivot. Cool let me change. pivot. I'm gonna I'm gonna ride off of this whole idea that we've been talking about for the last ten minutes. So I hate you know Dave Sobel, right? You may love him, you may hate him, but he's out there. I was he's, just gonna bring that up. I was he, just gonna bring his video this morning. Yeah, he just, just, he just published a video. He just published a video. Well, first there was a video of Jay McBain, who was at Forrester. Right. He's at a company called Canals Forrester, like, and then he came back after that and said he he. He admits that he was wrong about MSP. Uh, the yeah. MSP and data and the whole valuation. Why does he say that? In a nutshell, go watch his video, but I'm going to summarize it for you. Uh, he says, well, um, the MSP market's only growing, according to Dado's valuation, at about 18%. And so Dado's stock hadn't even gotten back up to its original IPO number. And why is nobody on Wall Street excited about the MSP uh, situation? There, you know, basically it's just, there's no exciting growth to it. And so Dave comes back and says, you need to do MSP and if you're a mature MSP, or if you're a starter MSP, MS, or you need to decide if you maybe want to do something else other than MSP. And they bring up some of the more high profile, like RPO, robotic process automation, or RPA, and a couple of these other, you know, kind of fast growing, you know, things that are or make the MSP growth at 18% from, you know, like not very exciting. Well, you know, my position, I've always felt the and is the differentiating factor. MSPs are commodity sales and they tend to take out the Kmart blue light because they're competing on, you know, there's no and. The, so I, that's why, and I normally don't listen to Dave, not anything, I just don't. I mean, it was the first time I happened to see it, and I go, "Hey, that was a good blog. That was a good post. Maybe I should, you know, pay attention to what he says more often." Nothing personal, not that. Uh, but that, I thought that was informative, and I think the and is the differentiating factor for us. By the way, our value is I think long after I die, they're going to want us in. They're going to want the West Coast ports open, so that system has some value, and that's that's the hidden. I, I thought I thought they were going to like you know keep your beard in a glass case and then like sell tickets to come and see it. And talk to it. Yeah. It does talk. Yeah. I mean, you know, the beard has its own handle and everything. Um, or it should. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing, right? There are MSPs and, and even on the Channel Strong Tour, we don't have to go too far. Uh, the uh, the outfit out in uh, San Diego area, Centrex IT created, yep. uh, just launched their own PSA within the last six, what, six months. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, like there are IT services companies that have created IP and like IP is largely today valued at from a, some sort of software that's been written. Uh, but if you go back and you look at, uh, can you even copy, you know, can you copyright a recipe? Is that possible? Because, you know, Keith brought up many times and other people, right? Process you know, the way that you stack things into a recipe in order to create something has value to it. I just yeah, back, in the, I just, back in the day, that was McDonald's. <clears throat> well, right? I, 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 it's funny you say that, Ken. I've been, I've been, I've been, telling, I've been telling you guys all on, on the overnight chats. Uh, I've been stuck on this show on the History Channel, which is the foods that built America. 
Think about uh, Hershey versus Nestle. Think about uh, Frito versus Lay before they combine. Think about Subway versus Blimpy. Is there still a Blimpy? I don't know. Maybe. Uh, I haven't seen one recently. No. Um, North Jersey. But, <laughs> but think, think about these companies. Like in the last hundred years, the food industry, like a hundred years ago, didn't even have the names that we know today. And we're talking about trillions of dollars. And a lot of it was just trial and error until they came up with their new, right? Whether that was McDonald's, to your point, Ken, whether that was, uh, I know a lot of people were up in arms when I said American pizza was invented in Kansas. But it was American pizza. American pizza. Pizza uh, hot. Yeah, who would have thought? But my point is, I don't think you can copyright a recipe. I think you can copyright software, though. You follow me, Keith? Yeah. Um. <laughs> He's a little shaky on that. No, I, I'm thinking. <laughs> I think that I, I've heard of of loss. You know, I wish we had an attorney on here. I've heard of lawsuits where people have sued over pirateering, people leaving and taking policy and procedures to another company. So, uh, the recipe per se, but you know, it depends on. There, there are some industry secrets you can coin. Well, you know, Keith, that, to your point, and a perfect example of that: switching industries from food. Southwest Airlines literally took the entire procedure and manual from what was it? Um, there was another airline that's since out of business. It's SWA. Yeah. Or something yes, like that. Sir. No, no TWA. TWA. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. So there was another airline where they literally just went, took the entire manual, slapped the Southwest logo on it, and became a new airline and basically replicated their entire thing. Doesn't so, that happen in our industry, George? Hasn't people taken the playbook from certain companies and try to apply it? Never mind. We'll talk about that. I could tell you, you know, this is related <laughs> to toys. There was a toy called Bratz that um, because of one of our hospitality clients, we were doing attorney support as they were, which is another way to make a killing and stupid. I never realized renting copiers and so on. But anyway, that was a copyright infringement. And basically that company kind of admitted they stole it from Mattel and the income was worth the possible lawsuit settlement years later. So, I mean, talk and about it, 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 it's the Bratz case, the Bratz dolls. And it was invented at Mattel, the guy left. And when they went to court, he basically, yeah. They, 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 it was just that there was so much money after, by the time I finally came to court, they go, we've already put the money in our pocket. Here's your settlement. Thank you. They did the Ian Richardson factor, right? They they have a fund for the lawyers, right? Remember Ian said that? Make sure you're putting money aside for, for things that happen like that, <laughs> events <laughs> like that. They just basically waited until it came up and then said, yeah, here you go. Yeah. Basically, you're right. We're guilty. Well, Walter says not everything Southwest is better, in my opinion. Okay, nope. Walter. Now, nope. I mean, there are a lot of people that we nope. know that are not Southwest fans. I don't mind. I have no problem. As long as I I'm, do. Playing, I'm good. Nope, not a, a self, lot of not people a are not fan. fan of the Southwest boarding, onboarding, offboarding. Nope. nope. Two free bags. Yeah, but George. Terrible. George, it's terrible. It's terrible. Please, let's be, let's, it's just terrible. It's, I, I fly them because they go to Scottsdale from here very reliably. Every time I almost regret it. I mean, it's just the, uh, it's horrendous. But anyway. <laughs> we could we could do a whole show on that. It's like maybe we will. Money, We're gonna have the travel edition of the MSP initiative live, I think. But how I much mean, you'd, have to, you'd have to bring the Dallas, the the uh the the um whatchamacallit king and Alex Stanners. Uh, listen, we'll get there. But my point is if I came to Darren Cirillo as the newly formed spirit frontier airlines. Oh my said, God. for every point that you have on your other airline, we're gonna give you 10. No, nope. sign me up. Sign me up right now. Let's do it. <laughs> there no, it is. You would not. There it no, is. I would, not. I would not. No, I would not. No, no, no. You can't value quality of travel experience. Well, forget about quality. How about the travel in the first place? Those guys have canceled and delayed more flights <laughs> than any other airline. Come on, dude. You know, you yeah. think about it. You go on a plane trip, you're either going for a conference, business, or vacation. Neither one. Do you want to add unnecessary stress and grief to your life? Right. It's not worth it. I had an argument with someone in the channel who hates the way I travel. 
they basically say it's and i go you know what i get to, i get dropped off at the gate you know i have someone pick me up i don't worry about waiting in line for uber and crap and i sit down on the plane while everyone's in i'm already working and enjoying life it just it's not worth the stress. It's just not worth it. That's years off your life. Um, it's to me, it's just not, I think we all work hard enough. We, but we, we're entitled to that. Sit in the front of the plane. Okay. Hey, listen, I, I'm not, I'm not here to tell you what's right or wrong, right? You're going to choose what's best for you, but um, you know, at the end of the day, price has, has a part in it. And what you're willing to do has a part in it, too. Sometimes people are just like the high life, you know, like these guys named Darren out there. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. The, the, I, I think Keith is way, way more into the high life than me. But that's, uh, you know, anyway. So. <laughs> hey, listen, I'm, I'm totally into what Keith said. If Keith would like to fund that, I'm all in. I think he should. I think he should fund it for everybody. He's, he seems like a very benevolent gentleman. I mean, you know, you can't take it with you, Keith. So, I mean, come on. I have a daughter still in college. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to go there. I have two still in college and a third going next year. But Ken, did you do 20 years between your daughters? Uh, no, would never. Okay. I, I can't say I would never. I did. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, no, I, uh, I made sure after my fourth that uh, something broke off in the sand. But anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then, then, da, da, da. Well, hey, hey, hey wait, you didn't, Pete, Pete didn't give us the laugh. It should have been. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, right. by the way, you know, you look at back to the travel thing, by the way, you go to me having a bad experience is the waste of money and um you know a, a, a 299 dollar trip on a plane where i'm stressed and people are pushing i don't like lines i'm not patient is a waste of money and spending more is is a better investment that's just the way i look wow. at it so anyway i thought this was a cool little feature right i know this has been around in a lot of different ways but in windows 11 Microsoft's going to let the IT department send messages in the taskbar to their people. I thought that was a little nice little trick there. But hold on. Here's something. We all talk about how hard it is to hire people. What if a, a part of the job interview is to be like literally say, you need to get from point A to point B, and we're only going to give you $150. Make it happen. And what? see how these people get creative when they got to stretch those dollars and know that they can't just pay their way to get all the way there. They got to get, they got to get a little bit interesting. It would be, it would be very intriguing to see what shortcuts or hacks people use in order to get there. And you know, inherently there's going to be problems, right? And how they mitigate through those problems to get to where they try to go. Like, I'm pretty sure there's like TV shows and movies that make contests out of this type of idea. What do you think, Keith Nelson? Would you hire somebody that way? No. No, why not? Because I sit there and I look, you bring up such great, you defend my position without knowing it. You look at the amount of time you sp people spent, and I've seen this, where they're trying to find the cheapest and doing all that time. You're going like, I just spent, you just spent in hours what it takes to go first class. I, I'm not doing it. I just no, I'm just saying. When people, yeah, they have time. to figure it out. Yeah, I go like, I, I would rather, I, I think it's, culture you're going you know it's the same thing you and i've talked about this when people are so worried about what a vendor's charging them i go when you have the blue light mentality it just smells on you and that's you're going it's the people that bitch about their customers pricing them are the same ones that are pricing their vendors and so you're sitting there, i think it's a culture it's a mentality it's it's like what's your what is your priority service or price and i don't think they overlap well, just before, my opinion but, but before we even get there you know we keep on saying how hard it is to get to certain points without the right people on your team and we know keith nelson's very particular because his team gets to drive teslas and we all know that that's not normal but but um you want to make sure that you're getting the right people and isn't part of this industry problem solving pretty sure it is 
I mean, you're using tools to get there, but problem solving is definitely the core of the IT service industry. So I want to know how good people are problem solving. What's so, yeah, isn't that a good thing to find out up front? Could be. Except Darren, for what do you they think, can go buddy? anywhere. They don't need to problem solve to get a job. And they might be, well, not going to take the time to do this for this guy. Well, guess what? Then you know what? You think I think that's part they, of your weeding I process? saved a lot of money because yeah. the $150 is a lot less than months and months and months of trying to figure out if it's the right person. Yeah. I don't know. You know me. I, I just basically hit them in the face with reality. And, and I, I try to scare them away with the reality. And then if they stay... I've, I've worked through the part, the part that sure. this is a Disney world, right? This is not an easy job. If it was, we'd have tens of thousands of people applying all the time, but that's not what happened. But that, that could be, that could be a test. Who can beat Janine Patterson in Disney world discounts? <laughs> I mean, that's, that's nice. a real test. Right. Right. Or how about just uh, dialing down? Huh? How about that? Yeah, that's true. She's pretty good at that too. <laughs> Uh, anyway, bringing it back down to reality. Uh, yeah, no, it'll, it'll be interesting. I mean, I think it'd be interesting to wait a minute. That wasn't reality. I'm going to tell Janine you said that. No, no, it is reality. I don't (laughs) shop Disney world discounts all day long. I'm sure she's the best at it because we always hear about it all the time. But my point is, Hey, listen, right? Like if you can figure out your way through life problems, you should be able to figure out your way through technology problems because isn't technology there to help the life problems? Just just thought that was the order of things. Well, I, I would say the better test would be, yeah, give them something to solve where they have nothing but Google in their brain, right? Because back in the day, we didn't have Google to sit and search every single problem. We had to come up with these answers. And I always found it funny when I had engineers where I'd leave them with a problem and they would come back to me and ask a question that they could have easily typed in and searched and done a little more research before coming to me. So I would always play it like, I don't know, maybe you should look it up. Like, just try to see if they would get going on that, right? Start to make them use their 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 judgment and try to get answers in a better way. So Keith, Keith you could apply this logic to your daughter and, and say, listen, you know, you're cut off and you can solve your way through <laughs> it and create a first class fund for your friends and, you know, be in good shape. <laughs> Actually, my youngest daughter is really good at planning and it's amazing because people come up to me and say, who taught her that? And I go, I have no idea. <laughs> it was like never just, dis- she has lists of what she does. She has calendars. She's very structured, very motivated, has a plan. Um, and I go, how did that happen? I go, I don't know. They're aliens. Yeah. I don't I know. Got, I say the I same got, thing. I got one for you, travel savvy people. Would you buy these? Air purifying headphones. Yeah, I was, uh, I was wait a minute. Wasn't that, Darren? That, wasn't Darren supposed no. to buy something like this a while ago? No, no. I, I I saw that the day it was released, and I was like, yeah. Now even I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Let's just talk about. Uh, oh my god. Uh, well, here's the thing. Why would you need air purifying headphones for a, for airlines when they're fly, when these flights are supposedly ninety eight point seven or ninety nine point seven? No, well, marketing marketing BS works very well, right? I mean, but uh, yeah. So that in that case, um, anyway. Oh, tell me, you, tell you, me, you, George. You, you, how many times have you heard that on a flight? While they're telling you, make sure you put your mask on in between bites and sips. But then right in front of me on the screen, it's saying, did you know that our purification or whatever system is 99.7% just like a hospital? Yes. Why? How many times? But yet yet the airlines and the hospitals are still wearing the masks. Yeah. (laughs) Or five-year-olds in New York. Actually, Actually, I will tell you, as a sidebar, MUSC in Charleston. Musk Hospital has removed their mask mandate. People can move about the hospital without a mask now. Listen, I get the hospital thing, right? There's also people just walking in there sick, has nothing to do with COVID. Get it. But but the government controlled VA facility that's connected to it still requires it. By the way, so you, if you, you cross be... the bridge and and you 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 know the the way that goes between the two buildings and one you have to wear it, the other one you don't. Uh, apologies if you're not so. a CNBC fan, but Microsoft wants to help businesses, business customers simplify those annoying software updates with something called Windows Auto Patch. Hmm. Mm. When you're talking about masks, I was uh, 
<laughs> presenting before a school board about the mask mandate and uh, read a report on how the improper use of uh, mask PPP is, uh, PPE is more dangerous than not wearing it at all. And the school board president said, no, we decided to listen to Dr. Fauci. And I said, what I just read you was a report done by Dr. Fauci about nine years ago. <laughs> nice. So is this the end of the RMM in the beginning here, George? So, so this, this, by the way, this goes exactly to the conversation that we had prior uh, at some other thing uh, last week, I believe, uh, one of these calls about Microsoft trying to, are they going to make this I'm, a subscription thing, George, or is it? Yeah, or is this it, is just going to be part of E3 and E5. Got it. They're just going to handle patching for you. Yeah, well, but here's the problem, and it's, I, I mean, listen, tell me if it's still a problem, but <clears throat> we had this thing back in the day, right? We, we could always auto-patch. The problem was certain patches blow up certain people's systems, and that's when we had to schedule around them and change them. If you had certain printers, you couldn't do certain updates. There's still management that's involved with this, right? Yeah, it's moving, it's moving, it's moving, away, it's moving away from that. It's moving away from that, unfortunately, yeah. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying, Darren, though. So do you still have clients that if an update ran, it would blow up their whole entire operation? Yeah, no, it, it, it's it's much less uh, it's less common than it has been. But the, the point is, there's going to be there's going to be a point, I think, where there is no user facing patch at all. It, right, I mean, it's, right. it's there's no there's no updates button. There's none of that. It's just, you know, you're perpetually updated. That's it. You, you, there will be nothing else to look at or control or see. I think that's where things are going, um, you know, and, they're, and they will monetize that. So that's, you know, that's something that they will use to say, well, hey, we're going to build this software. You're going to use it and we're, you're going to pay us and we're going to keep it secure. I think we have a couple models to uh, teach customers on why this isn't a great idea. Number one is the well beyond what they, the minute amount they pay us, their labor costs dwarf are just huge. So patching unscheduled, unsupervised can um, impede on labor because you're disrupting work. Number two, and most important, Microsoft has just proven to us beyond any shadow of a doubt that over time, they're gonna monetize everything that we think we're getting for free. So, for someone to shift over thinking this is included and Microsoft's just a great charitable company who wants business to grow is a special kind of stupid. Um, so you're going like, they, it may be the bait and sh shift, you know, it could be the Walmart theory is we're coming in cheap until we've eliminated every competitive business and then we're, going, we're pricing where we want or selling you absolute crap. Um, I don't think that I, I look at it as Microsoft making people aware that patching is important, but I surely don't think they play in our sandbox. Or now Amazon's playing in the SpaceX sandbox because they want to deploy their own satellite internet. What do you think? Would you buy internet, Pete, from, do you trust Elon more than Amazon? I don't know. I mean, yeah. you know, I have Elon right now, so. Yeah, yeah. But what, what, you know, they're, they're, they're more common names now than they were before. Amazon is, you know, think about it. It's, it's infiltrated your house. It's listening to every word you make. So it's, it's, a, it's an interconnected portion of your home now, right? Whether it's Google Home or AWS or, you know, I'm they're sitting, they're I'm sitting there right there. They're streaming your music. They're running right, your TV. Softball. There. We're we're gonna, in the last I'm gonna, minute. I'm going to leave everybody with this. Uh, Elon Musk is now part of the board of directors of Twitter. What does that yes. mean? Yes. Yes. Oh. Well, that, yeah, if you follow anything financial, I mean, there was a lot of good talk about this yesterday on, you know, CNBC, which for, you know, financial stuff is, is certainly worth having on sometimes. And there were many opinions. Some of them were quite, were quite good. And, you know, the one about it being, it's a little concerning when, you know, <laughs> We, he could just flat out buy the whole company too. I think that's probably what's gonna, you know, what's gonna happen next at he's, some point. He's, and vetting, then, he's vetting it from a board of directors perspective. Yeah, yeah, right. right. He just started on the board of directors, right? Hostile yeah, takeover. 
Yeah. Uh, he's not I making mean, it so hostile. He bought enough to control, gets on the board of directors, like Pete said. It's it's not so hostile. Yeah, right. it's an interesting, interesting turn of events there. And and the and the market loved it. I mean, you know, it's like it was it was seen as a huge positive move. Oh, for yeah, them, stock which, shot through the roof, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Might be good to go back and you know make sure nobody bought stock like two seconds before it was announced. So, but I digress. All right, everyone. Sorry for being a little bit late, but Pete and uh, and Ken definitely uh, got things started today. You're gonna probably see these guys on a regular basis, but you'll definitely see them on a Channel Strong tour if uh, if you guys are in the area of one of the upcoming tours. Definitely check out mspinitiative.com this session and every other sessions on there as well as uh, under channel strong you'll see where we'll be in person and uh-oh uh-oh somebody took somebody else's candy i'm gonna kill him i'm gonna kill him <laughs> yep 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 i'm addicted yep. now i'm addicted <laughs> told you catch you guys tuesdays thursdays and online 24 7 take it easy guys take care later